In his golden palace, the titan Kronos lay defeated and wrapped in chains. His powerful brothers and sisters, the old gods who ruled the world in this ancient age, prepared to tear the world apart with war to avenge him. And Kronos' children, who had just been freed from their prison in his stomach, fortified themselves on the snowy peak of Mount Olympus, led by the young Zeus. The earth and heavens braced for a cataclysmic battle between these two camps of mighty gods, and the outcome would change the order of the cosmos forever. For ten years, Kronos and the elder titans warred against Zeus and his family, and the Olympians stood ready. At Zeus's side were his siblings Hera, Poseidon, Hades, Hestia, and Demeter. But neither side could gain the victory. At last, Zeus sought the counsel of Mother Earth, and old Gaia answered him with a riddling oracle from the mouth of her cave on Mount Parnassus, that the winner of this war must free those held captive in the gloom of Tartarus, the dreaded prison of the underworld. Trapped in Tartarus were Gaia's monstrous children, the Hecatonchires who bore a hundred strong hands, and the one-eyed Cyclopes, Wishing them free, she willingly revealed the secret of victory to Zeus. Taking this advice, straight away he traveled through the dark underworld to the gates of Tartarus's unholy abyss, where he battled and slew the giant snake Kampe, the warden of this jail, and set about freeing the captives. The leader of the younger gods was awestruck at the sight of these first children of Earth. For each of the three hundred handers, named Briarius, Cotus, and Gyges, had moving from his shoulders a hundred arms, while above them towered fifty heads. As for the Cyclopes, Brontes, Steropes, and Arges, each of them had a single round eye in the center of his forehead. They had shown from their birth such overwhelming energy and terrifying strength that Uranus had feared them and thrust them into Tartarus before they were even grown. Zeus rejoiced at the power and skill of these allies in the war. The Cyclopes made themselves a forge in the glowing heart of the volcanic Mount Etna in Sicily, and there they crafted such gifts for their new comrades as only they could fashion. To Poseidon they gave a trident with unbreakable prongs, and to Hades a cap of darkness whose wearer was invisible to gods and men. For Zeus himself, they forged the kingliest weapons of all, the thunderbolts and the blasting, crackling lightning. Then Zeus set before his new comrades all the nectar and ambrosia of the gods and addressed them in council. Hear me, mighty children of earth and heaven, so I may speak what my heart demands. For long years, we have been battling against the Titan gods. You've won your freedom now from bondage and Tartarus's gloom. Stand with us and show your invincible strength against our common enemy. And the hundred-handed Cotus answered Zeus, Warrior and true king, we children of Earth honor your wisdom and know that you, and not the Titans, will avert chaos and destruction for all the immortals. Our power is yours. We shall protect this kingdom, yours and ours, and stand fast at your side in battle. All the gods and goddesses let up a mighty cheer, and in due course, with the Hecatonchires and Cyclopes with them, they rushed back into the heat of combat. The Titans on their side the vengeful Kronos among them were just as ready, and as the battle joined, the boundless sea resounded terribly, the earth boomed, the wide heavens groaned as they shook, and vast Olympus rocked on its base. Even down to the abyss of Tartarus echoed the sound of footfalls and battle strikes, and as the two sides came together, their great war cry reached to the starry skies above. Now Zeus loosed his fury, and the bolts with thunder and lightning shot so fast and fiercely from his hand that earth crashed in conflagration, 
and the forests crackled with fire. Ocean's waters boiled, and the vapor encircled the titans, while the unyielding, dazzling flames and flashes of electric light robbed their eyes of clear sight. Unbearable heat spread everywhere, and it seemed as if earth and heaven were clashing together and falling into ruins. At the same time, the winds spread smoke and battle cry and crash of spears as the hundred handers, insatiable in war, advanced, hurling three hundred vast rocks at a time. Before these terrors, even the elder gods could not stand. Kronos and the Titans were dashed from their battlements and fell like shooting stars nine days and nights down to earth, and then on down for nine days and nights more to Tartarus. Here were they bound up and cast into the dreadful pit, sealed away behind a triple wall of bronze built by Poseidon, and the great hundred handers were set to be their guards. But not all Titans were trapped in Tartarus. Prometheus, for one, had refused to resist the Olympians, recognizing with his unique wisdom and foresight that the Titans' rule was at an end. He would have dissuaded his kin from taking up arms in a lost cause, but they failed to listen, trusting instead in their own power. Huge Atlas, brother of Prometheus, after escaping the great defeat, was eventually overtaken, and Zeus stationed him on the very verge of the earth before the land of the clear-voiced Hesperides, with a sentence that he carry forever on his shoulders the weight of the whole vast sky. Having achieved victory and secured his kingdom for now, Zeus set about administering his new domain. He divided rule over the cosmos with his brothers, to Hades went dominion over the underworld, and to Poseidon the sea, while Zeus himself took the realms of the air and the earth. He rewarded all those who had supported his claim and fought beside him. But one of his old allies was far from pleased. Gaia resented that she had helped free her firstborn children from Tartarus only to have her titan sons and daughters take their place in the dark chasm. In hot wrath, Mother Earth brought forth from Tartarus the most horrific monster yet seen. Typhon, he was called, the greatest and most fearsome of Earth's children. Half man and half animal, he was human to his waist, and instead of legs he moved on vast, writhing, snaky coils. Typhon stood so huge that he towered over the mountains, and his head knocked against the very stars. His outstretched arms reached from sunrise to sunset, and a hundred dragon heads shot out from his shoulders, with a cacophony of competing noises and howls blasting forth. Bristly hair floated in the wind from his head and chin, and pure fire streamed from his eyes. Such a monster was Typhon the embodiment of chaos, the arch-enemy of Olympian order. Hurling clusters of rocks up at heaven, he ran with hisses and screams while a red mass of flame bubbled from his mouth. When the gods saw this enormous raging creature charge at Olympus, Zeus took up arms, shining and crackling as he summoned his power against the most unstoppable of all foes. His kingship would be tested and proven, here and now, on this field of battle. When Typhon was far off, Zeus hurled thunderbolts at him, and when he came near, he pursued him through the mountains that rose around Olympus. The mightiest of gods and mightiest of monsters did battle, every blow struck sending shockwaves through the world, cleaving apart mountains, casting ripples through the farthest oceans. Their battle raged on, joining in hand-to-hand -hand combat until both were covered in wounds, neither surrendering. But Zeus's almighty power didn't fail him that day, and leaping down from the top of Olympus, he burned Typhon's countless heads with a wave of white-hot lightning. He delivered one more all-powerful blast that tore through the air, lighting it all ablaze, and tore through Typhon's scaly skin. 
under Zeus's withering fire. The monster's rocky flesh, together with the landscape all around Olympus, melted away like metal in a forge, glowing hot and flowing into smoldering embers. When the smoke cleared and the ashes swirled in the air, Typhon lay in defeat, barely alive. Before the monster could recover his strength, Zeus buried him underground, wrapping his body with unbreakable chains that he thrashes against day and night in bottomless fury. They say that his prison lies beneath the volcano, Mount Etna, whose loud rumblings and fiery eruptions reveal that the raging monster still lies deep below. And it was with this grand victory over chaos personified that the reign of Zeus and the gods of Olympus truly began. It was a reign won through violence as well as wisdom, a kingdom born in the cinders of an old world and promising something new. Fate decreed that the bloody succession of generations, a cycle of rising and falling tides, would bring us mortals to this age of Olympus, and generations to come will pray that the dominion of Zeus, conqueror of the Titans, vanquisher of monsters, father of all, shall endure forever. <laughs>